We don't live to breathe, but without breathing, we wouldn't be able to live. Now, it might sound funny, but there's exactly the same thing happening in a business. But instead of oxygen, we're talking about money. So without money, a business won't continue to exist. But the purpose of running a business is not only to make money. I hope this makes sense because I'll be talking a lot about finances in business. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't mean that the only purpose of a business is to make money because there are other wonderful purposes like creating a wonderful culture within the business, uh, fulfilling the owner's dreams, fulfilling every employee's dreams, uh, serving customers, uh, having a relationship with suppliers, uh, social responsibility or the sponsorship and donation. So there's plenty a business can do, but without money, basically all those dreams you can basically throw away. So that is why money is necessary for a business to exist. Now, for many business owners, uh, they start off because they are good at something. So, I don't know, a vet is very good at being a vet, so that person starts a veterinary clinic. Now, when they start, they just have, naturally have customers because they've had some relationship in the past and they can easily get those customers to stick with them. Uh, and there are plenty of other things that people focus on when starting a business. And the one thing that is quite often just overlooked or more often than not totally ignored is money, finances. And it's as if we pretend that money will sort itself out once the business starts running. Now this is far from true and unfortunately this often causes many businesses to fail. So let alone the dream, the purpose of starting a business, you have to sort out your finances and have the right systems and processes in place so that you can have the time to focus on fulfilling your dream. So here I'm going to be discussing a wonderful tool for managing finances in a small, medium-sized business. The problem with the uh, current methods of tracking finances, which is the profit and loss, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement, is that they are always lagging reports. What I mean by this is that you will only have your reports available probably a week after the month in question. Obviously a balance sheet uh, doesn't have a period, it is a picture uh, from a specific day or even hour, but the content of those reports is as good as the data input to the software. So in other words, if there's anything lacking, like for instance supplier invoices, uh, or any expenses, then your profit on the profit and loss statement will be inflated. What is more, uh, if your sales team is good and they are able to input the sales invoices, then any hint of a customer wanting to proceed with an order will be raised as an invoice. So your profit and loss will show the top number, the sales figure, really high. Again, it will be overinflated. Uh, another thing that will quite uh, often happen is that you might receive some invoices from your suppliers at a later date because they have their own systems in place. So they might raise them once a month and it happens to be the middle of the next month. So regardless of how much you want your uh, monthly statements to be accurate, you just won't be able to do it. This also means that uh, with a small business, it's most probably you doing the accounting. So that means you have to put an awful lot of time after the first of the month or, or the last day of the previous month to put in all the data. If you use an external bookkeeper or accountant, then that process takes even longer because it takes you time to gather all the bills, send them by email, whatever it is. Then they have to input all the data and, and create all those uh, statements. And that could be anything between two weeks to a month after the period has happened. So a great analogy to this is like driving on the motorway without seeing your speed. So you don't know what speed you're going and you'll only find out once you cover your distance 
and someone at a later date tells you, okay, well, you've covered this distance in, let's say, two hours. So if we take into account the distance, your average speed was 65 miles per hour. But it would be very useful to know what is your exact speed every second of the time, especially if there are cameras, speed cameras on the way. So that is why I think that all these reports, the profit and loss statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement are absolutely useless for the majority of small, medium-sized businesses. Well, this is, I've, I know it's a very strong statement. You might say, well, why is that? Uh, well, like I explained, it is lagging uh, in, in terms of time and it is also more often than not inaccurate. Another thing that I've noticed uh, myself after uh, some time when I started the business was a very, a very interesting thing where you look at the profit and loss and let's say it shows a 20,000 pound profit and I'll be using pounds for the purpose of this video, but the bank account didn't grow by 20,000 pounds. So there was somewhere money missing. One place was invoices that were not paid yet. So for some weird reason on the profit and loss and the balance sheet, it will show as if you've already received the money. As we know, uh, if you don't have the money, then having it on paper is absolutely useless. The second thing that caught me out was all the purchase hires. So if you buy vehicles or machinery or equipment or anything on a purchase hire, so with delayed payments, it does not show on your profit and loss. The only time it will show is when your accountant puts it down as depreciation. So if you're doing the books yourself, I doubt you'd be able to correctly get that number and you basically leave that out. So if you are paying, let's say 15,000 pounds per month for your machinery, vehicles, equipment, whatever it is, or whatever loan, then it will not show there. So now instead of making a 20,000 pound profit, you're actually making 5,000 because the 15 is actually going away uh, to pay off the higher purchase. So as you can see, there are a few reasons why these uh, statements are absolutely useless. And for me myself, uh, even recently, a few days ago, I was leading an online webinar and I've been asked a question, when did I start looking into finances? And the truth is that I started nine months before starting my business, uh, not nine months because that's how long a child uh, it takes to, to, to get born, but because it just happened to be the time where I knew that I will be starting a business, I was still working for someone else, and I started my preparation. Uh, one of the uh, things that I did was I joined a five-week uh, business startup program, which, which was a good sort of Kickstarter, uh, I then started writing my own business plan. And in the meantime, I also went over to my grandfather. Unfortunately, he's dead now, but he used to teach others uh, at a university about bookkeeping. So obviously to me, it was a perfect match. And he taught me the old way. So I had massive sheets of paper with all the columns, uh, debit, credit, and you had to understand that if it's a supplier versus a customer, the debit credit ch changes. Uh, but I learned double entry bookkeeping, which is the way uh, books are done nowadays, uh, the old traditional way, but that was fundamental for me to understand how money works in a business and then to further grow my business. Until this day, 11 years after starting the business, I still use the knowledge that I've gained in, 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 during that uh, course or the process I was taught by my grandpa. So thank you, Grandpa. I know you won't hear it, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm sort of carrying on your legacy. Uh, but still, without, uh, I mean, with, without a specific tool, I knew that the uh, statements that are, for some reason, assumed that everyone should be reading, I just could not find them handy at all. The other thing is actually that reading these uh, statements takes a lot of time and experience. So if you just grab a, let's say, balance sheet without knowing what is there, you're just staring at random numbers. You really have to understand what's, what's behind those numbers. And I've read quite a lot of books about uh, finances, uh, how to understand numbers, financial, non-financial managers, and, and all of those. There are some great books around there, 
but what I was lacking was a single way to monitor the amount of money we earn every single day. So I set myself a task that I need a leading indicator. Instead of a lagging, which happens after the period in question, I want to know today, every minute, every second of the day, whether we are on track of achieving our financial goals. So I set on a journey of reading various books. I even went to an external financial consultancy. They created a wonderful Excel spreadsheet with all these sliders. I could move things. What if our cost of goods sold increase? And what if expenses go up? What if we reduce the headcount? All of those things. But still, it was not what I wanted. The problem was, I didn't know what I wanted. I just wanted something that will allow me to understand our position at a glance. Uh, the other reason that prompted me to find something was a commission structure. Now, we all would like to reward our employees, but the problem I had was that every single book I read about any sort of KPIs or commission structure, structures mentioned that the ultimate KPI is sales. So turnover, in other words. I was never comfortable with that uh, idea for a few reasons. One of it was that, like I mentioned, sales, you can just input any amount of invoices and it will show up as sales. So if you tell your salespeople that our target is £100,000 this month and they don't get any other limits, then the first thing they do is just raise invoices. And, and without even calling a single customer, they could hit that target, which is ridiculous, but that is true. The second thing that could happen is that they can hit those targets by providing discounts. Now, the moment they start discounting, you start treading water because now you have to do exactly the same amount of work for less money. And that difference, that the less money will hit your bottom line straight away. It won't be hidden or buried somewhere in expenses. Whatever your customer doesn't pay you is the, the, the amount that you won't have left on your bank account. So I'll talk about that a bit later, but it's crucial to understand that discounting is probably the worst thing you can do in a business. But if you are not aware of it, then your salespeople are most probably not aware of it. So they will hit their targets through discounting. Uh, so so, so that, that another thing is that when you employ a manager or a director and their KPIs are to hit specific sales targets, there are two things they can do. One is start discounting or tell the sales team to start discounting. You'll hit that. And the second thing, which is even worse, is they can start making things if you're a manufacturing company just for the shelf. So everyone is busy. When you as the owner walk in and think, oh, wow, everyone's busy. We're doing great but you will have a nasty surprise because, and this comes from the accounting world where finished goods, believe it or not, can be put onto the balance sheet as an asset at market value. So in other words, if we as a company, let's say we make bus stands, the ones that you wait when it's rainy, it doesn't uh, rain on you. Let's say we make uh, each of them and we sell them for a, uh, for £1,000, so that is the price for our customer, and the new person, the manager or director, orders the company to make a hundred of them. So everyone's busy, everyone's making these bus stands and, and the place is buzzing like a beehive, and then surprise, surprise, uh, your balance sheet is very strong because all of those uh, bus stands count as an asset work in process or actually it's finished goods. So you would have 100,000 pounds worth of assets sitting on your balance sheet. In reality though, you have a hundred bus stands that no one wants. Well, hopefully they will want, but no one bought it yet. So now you've got storage space. So if you don't have that storage space, you now have to hire a new place or pay somewhere for storage. So you're actually increasing your uh, expenses. And very soon, you will basically grow out of business. So this is what happens when people say that you're growing out of business. It basically means that everything seems fine, all, all the numbers are going up, but actually you're running out of money. 
And this is one of the few scenarios that can happen when you're growing out of business. So I hope you understand that there are various pitfalls uh, and the traditional uh, statements, profit and loss, balance sheet, and cash flow are useless. But when I wanted to set a commission structure, I wanted to make sure that we are paying out of profits. Now you might think, well, yeah, if we're hitting, let's say 100,000 and anything above is a profit. Well, yes and no. If you are a, let's say, retail shop and your margin is 50%, then indeed, and it's fixed throughout, every single product only has a 50% margin. Then that means that indeed your cost of goods sold is 50% and everything else that is left is to be utilized to cover all the expenses, overheads, and, and with a bit of profit. So that is fine. And then indeed you can set a 100,000 pound target assuming that 50% of that is cost of goods sold and 50,000 pounds is left. Hardly any business has fixed margins for every single product, so they do vary. And I will stick to an example in steel because it's just easier for me, but it's relevant to every single business. So my problem was that if we have a month where we have, and let's say this is the total turnover of 100,000 pounds, then in one month, we could have spent 30,000 pounds on materials, which means that we have 70,000 pounds left in the business. Let's also assume that our business requires 50,000 pounds to keep running. So the 50,000 pounds is actually quite easy to work out. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a, in a second, but for now, let's just assume that this covers all the expenses, all the overheads, and also includes a bit of a profit. A bit of a digression, with profits, every company must make a profit. I know you as a business owner might think, ah, oh, that's, that's very greedy of me and so on. And, but remember that you as the owner are judged on your performance based on the profit. If you want to grow, you need surplus money. If, if you want to apply for a loan, uh, for lease uh, or for higher purchase, you need to show strong profits. Uh, surprisingly, uh, the profit margin, the net profit margin varies depending on country, but for most Western countries, Western Europe countries, it is around 10%. Uh, and believe it or not, it does change uh, around the world. So for us, it is, let's say, 10%. So, so we can easily off turnover. So if it's a hundred thousand pounds, then the profit should be 10,000 pounds. So in other words, we need around 40,000 pounds to cover expenses and overheads. So in our scenario, if we spend 30,000 pounds on materials, and remember that this is not your money, I call it money in transit, because it is not yours. You might receive it and you will receive it on your bank account, but you will have to pay your suppliers for it. So it's not your money. So after paying your suppliers, you have 70,000 pounds left. And this means that if there's no overtime and other un un unplanned expenses, then you have made not only 10% worth of profit, but actually another 20, so not 10, but 10,000 pounds of profit. You've actually made another 20, so you're actually 30,000 pounds in profit. So, Let's just write the surplus amount. So we are plus 20,000 above our required amount. Now let's go over to an alternative example with the same amount of turnover, 100,000 pounds. This is what can happen. We might have a month where this time round, it costs us 70,000 pounds for the materials. Therefore, we have 30,000 pounds left. So as you can easily see, 
this time round, we are short by 20,000 pounds. Now I probably should have used different, uh, the opposite colors <laughs> because green is not positive, but you, you understand what I mean. The same monthly target in terms of turnover can actually drive you out of business. Now you might wonder why is there such a variation? And this is because it all depends what type of products or services were sold in that month, whether they were the high margin or the low margin products or services. For us as a steel company, it means that in this scenario, we had very light steel, which was quite cheap, but a lot of fabrication. On the contrary here, the turnover is high, therefore we most probably sold heavy sections with hardly any fabrication. So we spent a lot on the material and this is probably just the markup. And with employees and with the rent and everything else, they are fixed cost. You can't get rid of your people and your units and all the business rates and all of that just because you have a lower turnover. You still have to keep paying. So uh, with the same monthly turnover target, we either will in profit or we are really in a very bad situation. So when I set myself on the journey of finding the KPI that will help me, I actually had an epiphany during a flight. By the way, uh, I really enjoy flights because that is a moment for some reason when I, I, I suddenly think about great ideas and it's not the first time where one of the great ideas uh, just came to me during a flight. Uh, so now this was an epiphany to me that what we have to focus on in a business is what is left. Not the turnover, but what is left because that money is what is available for us to cover the expenses, the overheads and to allow for a profit. Now I mentioned earlier that it's very easy to work this out. Yes, and you probably know how. You take your last month's bank account or bank statement and you go through the transactions. You exclude all your suppliers, so any materials, and you exclude external services. So for instance, for us as a company, if we use an external company to do an installation project, then that is also cost of goods sold because it is not our money. So exclude all your suppliers from all the expenses uh, in, in, on your bank account and sum up everything that is there. Obviously, if there was a month where you had extraordinary high expenses, for instance, there was a one-off purchase and that is not done every month, then divide that by 12. You, you get what I mean, just to make that number as true as possible. If you wanted to make it even more uh, true or a better reflection of reality, take last 12 months worth of accounts uh, again, get rid of all your suppliers and, and external services uh, and then divide that sum by 12. So you should have a very good uh, sort of understanding of what it costs you to run that business, your business. So end up with a number and in this case, as I mentioned, it would have been uh, £40,000 plus £10,000 and this is profit equals our 50,000 pounds that we need to achieve every single month. And this is something I got so excited about that I knew that this is a breakthrough for my business. And believe it or not, but back then we had around probably six, maybe eight employees. And with this single idea, we managed to grow it up to 40 employees. It was also the reason why I decided to very quickly shut a business that we have just acquired because the senior management team did not have an idea about the fact that this is the money that your business must have in order to survive. Now, when I came to this conclusion, I thought I'm a genius, <laughs> but then I obviously knew that that is not the case. Uh, as an aeronautical engineer graduate uh, and doing all these crazy equations, I knew that there were people who were much more clever than I am and I knew that them, it must have been figured out before. 
And indeed, I went back to my office and I took out the book, something along the lines of 100 business KPIs by the Financial Times. And I started searching and I found it and it is called Contribution Margin. So if you want to find out more and, and just not listen to, to what I have to say, but actually do some reading and understanding, search Contribution Margin. Uh, so now the next thing that was uh, very obvious was that every single project has to contribute towards our £50,000. So let's say we have a project or a service or a product, whatever it is, that costs £1,000 to our customer. Now let's assume that this time round, for this product, service, project, whatever it is, the cost of goods sold, which is either your materials or the external services that you pay, let's say it is 400 pounds. This means that your business has 600 pounds left to utilize to cover the costs and expenses or fixed cost expenses, allow for a profit so that you end up with this number. So out of every single project or thing that you sell, the, these amounts, the 600 or whatever is left, have to add up to our 50,000 pounds. And this is a breakthrough because now instead of looking at the price, you actually just have to look at how much is left in your business. From here, it is also very obvious how disastrous discounting is. So let's say that as per our previous examples, a sales team decides to provide a 20% discount, which means that the price will now be 800 pounds. The 200 pounds comes off this part. We cannot go to our suppliers, say, look, please give us your materials for half the price because we're so silly that we've handed a 20% discount to our customer. That won't happen. You can't go to your employees saying, look, we now have to work for one, th well, reduce 33% of our rates or pay rates because we happen to give a 20% discount. That won't happen. So no, <laughs> the only place where you are losing out is what is contributed to your business. So the full 200 pounds is taken away from the contribution, which effectively means that now you have 400 pounds contributing to your business instead of 600. Now, the thing that you can see is that in order to still maintain the same level of contribution, you now have to increase your turnover by 50%. I hope you understand the ramifications of it. If you have to increase your workload by 50%, that means everyone has to do 50% more. So if you had 40 emails per day, you now have to do 60 emails per day only to end up with exactly the same figure at the end of the month. Obviously, this is not possible because that meant that you had too many employees in every department of your business. So this means you need to add more employees or more assets uh, like vehicles or more machines, more equipment, more offices, more uh, whatever it is, you have to start adding. This in turn means that now your costs are not 40,000, but let's say 50,000 plus the 10,000 uh, pound profit, now you have to achieve 60,000. So as you can see, it is a downward spiral. This is where your business grows out of business uh, because what is happening in the background, everyone is busy, but you're treading water. And someone said that it is better to stand still than run around like a fool. And this is exactly it. It's better to not take a project with a minus 20% discount and wait for a project where it is fully contributing to your business than handing out discounts left and right. 
Obviously, there are strategies where discounting is part of the strategy, but then when doing all the numbers, you actually take into account this part and not the full 600 pounds. So yes, don't think that I'm silly and I don't understand that there are other strategies. Yes, they are, but quite often business owners don't take this into consideration. They just think, well, it's better to have 800 pounds and get the project than lose it at full value. And that is very easy to make that trap. What you have to do in this case, if that is your issue, is to focus on value-based selling. Now, this is a topic for a totally different video, but in short, you have to find a way where your uh, customers are actually benefiting from paying the full price. In other words, cheap and events are being cheap, or your service is so good that it covers everything and they won't have any nasty surprises. But like I said, not, not for now. So this shows how disastrous discounting is. And there's another wonderful thing that comes out of focusing on the contribution margin rather than the turnover. I've got all the pens in my hands. It always happens. Believe me, I, I, I'm just, I nick them. I, I, <laughs> I take them everywhere with me. Okay, put them away. So let's go now and talk about our sales funnel, including all the departments that fulfill orders. So let's say we have, uh, let's say three departments afterwards. So this is the sales department. Let's say this is the design department. This is production and this is logistics. Again, this is an example based on my steel company but each company works in exactly the same way. No matter what you do, it's just the name of the departments are different and obviously they do different stuff because as a lawyer, I doubt you fabricate steel. Uh, but the idea is that if we want to have 50,000 pounds worth of contribution, then that means that every single department needs to be able to process that amount of work. So as you can see, going back to our previous example, if we start discounting, then in, in technically they will be still doing 50,000 pounds worth of contribution, but the workload will increase by 50%. Now this whole idea is very important when it comes to growing your business. And remember my purpose is not only to run and grow my businesses, but to help you grow yours. So that is why I'm sharing with you this piece of information that if you want to grow, let's say you want to grow uh, by, I don't know, let's add, now you want 70,000 pounds worth of contribution. So you've worked out that you want 70,000 pounds. So let's write this down. I'll just write it this way. So if you go to your sales team, say, okay, guys, here's a team let's work together our service is superior to everyone else's you motivate your team and say guys our new target for this month is seventy thousand pounds and by the way if you hit that we're going go-karting or whatever it is obviously pub is is a must then they most probably will be able to achieve it even if not with the same amount of people because you want to grow you might have already recruited someone or even a few people to join your sales team but if you ignore the other departments, then they will be overloaded. They will simply not be able to process the additional uh, work. So this is why you now have to understand that whatever goes through our sales funnel here, everything needs to go throughout your whole company. There might be a few exceptions, like there's no design required, can go straight to production and so on, but let's assume, let's, let's keep it simple, it goes everywhere. This means that your design team needs to be able to uh, process 70,000 pounds. This means that your production needs to be able to uh, fabricate 70,000 pounds worth of work. And it's not turnover, it's the contribution. And also logistics needs to be able to deliver this amount. Now it might turn out that previously you had, let's say three designers and they roughly managed to do this, now you probably need four designers. So now it's four. 
production again let's say you had eight people now you probably need 10 people uh, logistics you had three trucks now you need four trucks uh, obviously you've built into your growth plan the increased cost of, of the uh, increased number of employees or vehicles and driver so it's still sort of above profitability uh, but I hope you understand the, the, the whole process is that you have by by putting it down this way you now have a clear guideline of how much every single department needs to be able to process okay uh, so this is for growth now the other thing I'll use this wipe <laughs> by the way uh, as it happens when you buy online you never know what the size is so when we got these we're like oh my god is this for babies <laughs> but because we ordered them so many and they were obviously cheap we know why we still use them it was many years ago but yeah <laughs> let's use this doggy bone to wipe it out now the other thing that is so great about focusing on contribution is that you now have a clear target for everyone throughout the company for a single day so let's assume we have uh, 50,000 pounds per month per calendar month let's divide it by 20 days because there are on average 20 days in a month yes I know there's sometimes more and sometimes in February less but this means that we need two and a half thousand pounds worth of contribution per day so this is exactly what I wanted to achieve and this comes from a friend of mine who used to sell ice cream to shops and he said that when he got out of bed he knew exactly how many boxes of ice cream he needs to sell to get his bonus I'm like wow that is what I want to introduce and I, it was only possible by focusing on the contribution margin so here you can see that you as the business owner and everyone in the company knows that when they start their work at 800 or 900 or whatever the time is then by the end of the day 4 p.m 5 p.m again whatever the time is they must have sold projects or products worth 2500 pounds in contribution so again the turnover doesn't matter this could equate to 4000 pounds of turnover six ten thousand pounds doesn't matter but we know that two and a half thousand pounds is left if that day you only hit two thousand pounds that means that the following day you need to achieve three thousand pounds to stay on track so in other words we work in increments of uh, two and a half so on day three of the month you need seven and a half on day four you need ten thousand pounds worth of contribution to know that you are on track so here you can see why this is a brilliant tool because this is like the speed me speedometer in your car rather than finding out what was your average speed after you've completed the journey here at every single literally minute or second of the day if you've got a system in place a computerized system that counts these per every single order one and paid because you need the money then you know exactly where your business stands this is also easier to manage depending on the amount of salespeople you have let's say for instance and we won't be using the previous example uh, let's say we have five sales people so we have five sales which means that every one of them needs to sell products or services worth 500 pounds in contribution now isn't this brilliant a person starts their day and they know that they need to achieve 500 perfect obviously you have to limit uh, the discount so they don't sell like crazy and they end up selling a few projects with a lower margin because that will make your people very busy throughout the company uh, so you don't want that but at least you have a clear target for everyone this also means that you can now clearly define your commission structure because if your company throughout the month has achieved this in contribution then anything above it is almost pure profit 
Yes, there might be overtime because technically people are working longer and more hours, but obviously you don't have to share everything above that 50,000. If you half that and then whatever is left in that half, that could be redistributed as a bonus, then that makes your sales team very, very uh, ener energized. They've got a clear vision. They've got a clear picture of what needs to be achieved in a specific month for them to get their bonuses. What is more, what you can do is introduce a structure. So if in one month we achieve, let's say 60,000 only once, and in the, in the other ones 50,000, just so we're sure we're never making a loss, then we go out to the pub. If for, in two months we achieve 60,000 and in the third one 50,000 is better than the previous scenario, then we go not to the pub, but we go, let's say, bowling. And if we hit 60,000 pounds worth of contribution in all three months, we go to, let's say, go-karting or whatever you, you decide to, to rank it, but it's just something to strive for. The other thing worth noting is that if one employee is very good and they hit all their targets and exceed them, but the company hasn't hit their break-even point, then no one gets their bonus because you can't pay commission out of losses. You're shooting yourself in the foot because you've not only not made money, but now you're paying out. So, so you're basically uh, ruining your financial position. And one last final thing, which I mentioned that by knowing this, I very quickly decided that a company that we acquired needs to be liquidated, which is very sad because quite a number of people lost their jobs, but I just knew it was a total mess. So. The example was that as soon as we took over, we had various uh, senior management team meetings and they were obsessed about a project that they were going to win. The project was worth 18,000 pounds and it sounds like a large number, 18,000 pounds. I mean, yeah, in any number, in anyone's world, that is a significant amount. And it was a uh, subcontract uh, job. Subcon, as, as we refer to it, means that the customer will be sending the material our way. So we just supply fabrication or labor hours. So normally it's around 50 pounds per labor hour and then that's how you work this out. And the amount of hours you think it will take for that project, multiply that by 50 and you end up with this number. That's how it works. My question was, how much steel does this project uh, require? How much steel is there? 70 tons. Okay. My next question was, what is your throughput? Or in other words, how many tons of steel can you fabricate per day? The answer was 10. So if we divide this by 10 tons per day, this means that it will take seven days to fabricate this project. It will take more than a week because we will uh, hit a weekend. So it'll be probably nine days. So one third of a calendar month. Yet this company required 200,000 pounds worth of contribution per month to break even with a very small profit. So in other words, it required 10,000 pounds of contribution per day. We divide the monthly amount by 20 days and we end up with 10,000 pounds. So as you can see, and you're probably guessing what I'm going to say, they wanted to take on a project that would take seven days, yet it would hardly cover two days of uh, the required amount of cash that we needed to keep everyone employed. And this is the moment, as you can see, it only took us a few minutes, where I just realized that just this won't work. We just never will be able to make this work if the senior management team was just so incompetent when it comes to numbers. I don't blame them. It just shows the reality of business where people are just busy doing their thing, but they don't understand the mechanics behind it. And finances is probably the most important 
foundation that you need to sort out before you can grow in a controlled way. So, uh, as you can see, this was the turning point and, and unfortunately uh, we had to close, close the business. Uh, uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, we don't live to breathe, but without breathing, we wouldn't be able to live. And that is true for your money, the money in the business is required for your business to survive and achieve all your wonderful goals that you have. Without money, you can basically wrap up your business. So also, as I mentioned before, my purpose is to help you grow your business. So if there's anything you would like to ask, just comment below. Uh, obviously follow me because I do a lot of vlogging and various other videos with some business tips and also visiting other businesses interviewing business owners uh, so if there's anything you want just ask Michael K